Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So uh, welcome to your readings for the month of October 2018. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and returning if you are doing so. Please keep in mind that these are general readings, okay? So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. And because these are general readings, the energies can be switched. They can go either way. So just take it as it resonates for your specific situation. And if, does, if something does not fit, please do not try to make it fit because then that will only confuse you. Yeah. Um, I do want to extend a very happy birthday to all of the Libras, since in the Western system, we are in Libra season. Happy, very, a very happy birthday to you and a very happy birthday to the October Scorpios. Yes, because we will be moving into your season in late October. Now, if you are you, if you resonate more with the Eastern system, of which I do personally, then we are still technically in Virgo season. So very happy birthday to the Virgos out there that resonate with the Eastern system. Yeah. Um, if you don't know which side you resonate with more, uh, I have provided some links in the description box below. If you like, you can go to those links and you can put in your birth uh, data and calculate your, your birth chart for both the Western and the Eastern system and see which one you resonate with. For me personally, I grew up believing I was a Taurus sun, but then when I started investigating and learning about Eastern astrology, I learned that I'm actually an Aries sun and that kind of fits a lot better. I resonate with that much more. There is no absolute answer as to which system it's, is better. It's really all about what you resonate with the most. And of course, depending on no matter which side you're on, still watch the videos. They can resonate at whichever, in whichever way is best for you. Okay. That is all your decision. Either way, the readings are here for you to watch. Yeah. So, um, just a little bit of shop talk. I am available for personal readings. If you would like a personal reading with me, you can get my email address from the description box below, as well as a list of all of the readings that I offer. Um, if you cannot decide which reading would work best for you after going through the different options, you're still welcome to email me and we can chat a little bit about what is going on with your situation and I will help you decide which reading would be best for you. Yes. I will be at Om Shanti Bookshop every Monday from 11 to 5 p.m. If you would like to schedule a time to meet with me and have an in-person reading, in -person reading for face to face, you can find the link to the website for Om Shanti in the description box below. And once you get to the website, you will find their phone number. You are encouraged to give a call and let them know if you would like to book a reading ahead of time. Otherwise, walk-ins are 100% absolutely welcome. Just come on down whenever you have a chance. Yeah. For the readings this month, we're doing the same as we did as last month. So we're go using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck, you guys. It's so pretty. And then, of course, we're finishing out with my best friends, the unicorns. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So... I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's get to the readings, guys. <laughs> Hello, Capricorn. Welcome to your reading for the month of October 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get to it. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Capricorns, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Capricorn to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of October 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Capricorn, just going to give this a few shuffles here. Um... So I'm visualizing, uh, to help me channel the energies of the signs, I often visualize their symbol, right? So I'm visualizing your symbol, and it's it's appearing in red. I feel like you guys might be very passionate about something, very fired up about something. Um, maybe wanting to manifest. You might be in a very strong manifestation mode right now, a manifestation period. 
I'm hearing that there's just something you're very passionate about. So, maybe a start of a new relationship? A new love interest, potentially? I don't know. That's what I'm kind of picking up on here. That's what I'm hearing. Um, if it's not like a love, if it's not a relationship or anything, it's like a passion project. But you're definitely fired up. Okay, Capricorn. One more shuffle, and then we're going to get into it. All right. Capricorn. Boop. Okay. Overall energy for you, Capricorn. <laughs> We've got the Ace of Pentacles. There is some sort of offer. Maybe you want to make an offer. Maybe someone else wants to make an offer. If you're not the one that's fired up about something or passionate about something, there may be someone else that's passionate about something that involves you, Capricorn. Okay? Um, yeah. Okay. Ace of Pentacles. You've got the Magician. So look at that. Passion project. You're manifesting something. You, you're right. You're wanting to manifest something. That's great. We've got... The Wheel of Fortune, and you got the Empress. So not only are you trying to manifest something, um, you've got the abundant and the fertile energy to do so, at least the energy or the environment to do so. Someone, some of you may be trying to get pregnant, and if you're trying to conceive, um, I, I wish you the best of luck. I just hope that that's in alignment with what both parties want. Um, I don't know, I'm not trying to throw any shade or fear out there, but if someone's trying to get pregnant, I just hope it's for the right reasons, okay? Just gonna put that out there. Um, but yeah, Capricorn, either you, uh, Capricorn, you might be in the process of manifesting something. This could be a brand new career. This could be a new career uh, direction. Um, this could be, maybe it could be a relationship. Um, but also with the Wheel of Fortune here, I'm really feeling like you're coming out of a cycle where you might have felt like you were being blocked in some way. I'm so sorry, guys. Hold on a second. I got to plug in my computer before it dies on me. Just a second. I thought it was plugged in this whole time. <laughs> okay. There we go. All better. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, you could you really... There's a... Manifest manifestation mode. I think that's what I'm going to call this type, the title of this reading. Manifestation mode, okay? Um, but with the Wheel of Fortune, you're here. I feel like a cycle is ending that has, a cycle that has potentially kept you feeling blocked or restricted from manifesting in some sort of way, okay? For the first half of the month, current energies, you have the Two of Pentacles. All right, so you're keeping things in balance, keeping things in check, so that, uh, that basically to help this with this manifestation, Okay. Uh, coupled with justice. All right. There's definitely some justice coming into your life right now. You could be connecting with a Libra. Um, and if you are, if you are trying to manifest a relationship, um, and whether this is with the Libra or not, although this came through when I, when I mentioned that you could be connecting with a Libra, um, this is the courting phase. In a sense, this is like the, the back and forth, um, the, 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 the banter, the conversations, the trying to figure out how, when, where to get together, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, really trying to keep things as balanced as possible in order for this manifestation to come to fruition, okay? The second half, uh, or the second set of current energies for this first half of the month, you have Ten of Swords. I really feel like someone is coming out of a relationship, okay? Or at least someone's coming out of a situation in which they really struggled through it. Um, the worst is behind you at this point. And that's actually falling right in line with the energy that I was picking up from the Wheel of Fortune. It's like you're coming out of a cycle of something that's been holding you back. And that's what I think this Ten of Swords is speaking to. The Ten of Swords is coupled with the Knight of Wands, okay? So because of this... Well, in the face of this Ten of Swords energy, you, <laughs> you've got this passionate 
fiery individual that's either coming towards you or you are moving towards them in this way um, in order to get away from this Ten of Swords energy, to move on, to move forward quickly, fast, furiously, okay? <laughs> yeah. The challenge for the first half of the month <laughs> the chariot, making a move, moving forward towards what you desire, okay? This also could be cancer. You could be, you could have cancer in your chart, or you could be um, connecting with a cancer. Cancer is the opposite sign of Capricorn, okay? But um, the challenge here I'm picking up is not only moving forward towards what you desire, um, it could also be keeping your emotions in check here. That's something that I picked up on. And it's funny because with the, the Knight of Wands, I felt like maybe you could be connecting with a Sagittarius. And um, the Chariot came out for the Sagittarius reading. It came out as like the very first card of the overall energy, okay? The Chariot is coupled with <laughs> the Four of Wands. All right. So the challenge here is to move forward towards some sort of stability, some sort of foundation. You might be moving towards forward towards marriage. Um, check the Sagittarius reading. It's funny because for the last few months, Capricorn and Sagittarius, even though they're right next to each other in the Zodiac, for my readings, at least they've been resonating with each other. They've, the Capricorn and Sagittarius have been doing this like dance around each other. Um, so that might resonate, and the Sagittarius reading might resonate with you. Now, I just could be connecting with some people that have both Capricorn and Sagittarius strongly placed in their charts. Um, but there is movement towards some sort of foundation or commitment. And with the Ace of Pentacles here, I really feel like someone is trying to manifest a commitment, okay? And so the challenge is the action steps to take towards this union, this marriage, or at least this foundation. Um, the, the Four of Wands also talks about um, home, your home space. So you might be, you might have to move. Um, you might be wanting to move in order to be closer to someone or in order to be closer to a job opportunity or whatever it has to do with what you're trying to manifest, okay? Uh, the potential outcome for the first half of the month Victory! Six of Wands. Coupled with... Ooh! The Three of Swords. But you know what this is saying to me? This is victory after heartbreak. So like what I, like I was saying, with the Ten of Swords here, someone was um, is coming out of some sort of relationship in which it was pretty tumultuous, I want to say, towards the end. I'm not going to say it was tumultuous throughout the whole situation, although that's entirely possible. But towards the end, things just... just just went sour. But now here with the first half of the month, you have the Six of Swords with the Three of Swords. I'm sorry, the Six of Wands, excuse me, with the Three of Swords. So this is triumph after heartbreak. Triumph after a breakup. A new beginning of sorts. There could be some sort of recognition for uh, a well, a well, a, a good match here, especially in the face of a previous relationship that may not have turned out to be the best, okay? The second half of the month, energies for the second half of the month, you have judgment, answering the call. If we're, the first thing that's coming to mind here is if we're talking about a relationship, this could be a divinely guided relationship. This could be a divinely orchestrated partnership, whether it be a soulmate, a divine, a divine partner, maybe a twin flame, maybe who knows. But either way, I'm really hearing that this is divinely guided. This is divinely orchestrated. Okay. Judgment is coupled with the eight of wands. And this is, and so because of this divine orchestration, there's going to be some pretty swift movement, or at least um, there could be a lot of good communication, okay, that really sets things off with a bang or really starts getting things moving quite quickly. Please excuse my phone. That's obnoxious. <laughs> but actually, I'm going to take that. If you heard, I don't know if you heard that, but my phone just vibrated. And so I'm going to take that as confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, second set of energies for the second half of the month, you have, woohoo, transformation with death. 
Okay, this is not a bad thing, guys. This is a transformation. This is a change. This is a change. I'm hearing this is a change into something new, okay? This, uh, death is coupled with the two of swords. Now, there could be some sort of apprehension here. I'm picking up a little bit of fear, a little bit of like, oh, God, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I should do this. But also, this could be transformation coming out of this two of swords energy. There could have been some sort of apprehension some sort of stalemate, someone didn't necessarily want to see things for what they truly are, someone didn't necessarily want to make a decision. But I feel like that could be changing here. Because of judgment and the Eight of Wands, there really could be some, like I said before, there could be some communication that really gets things moving and could potentially get someone to come out of this Two of Swords energy and to really open up, okay? I feel like in the beginning of the situation, there, or at least the circumstance, things were a little lukewarm. There was some, especially if someone is coming out of a relationship um, with the option of moving into a new one with someone else fairly quickly, because you do have the Knight of Wands. Um, and in this situation, I'm picking up, it's not necessarily a wishy-washy energy. It's more of just a very passionate energy that comes in very fast and very hot and fiery. Um, and that could have been a, a reason for someone to hold back, okay? But now with, the, with Death and the Two of Swords, I'm seeing an end to that, okay? In the second half of the month. Okay. The challenge for the second half of the month. Ace of Wands. Uh, the first thing I want to say is don't allow this to be all sexual. All right? Because now, now you've got the, not only the Knight of Wands, but you've got the Ace of Wands too. So the challenge, I'm already, I'm feeling like the challenge is to connect more on, to connect on, on a deeper level than just sexually. And I don't want to, trust me, there ain't nothing wrong with connecting sexually, but there's more to a relationship than just sex, okay? The Ace of Wands is coupled with <laughs> the Two of Cups. So yes, guys, the, uh, the the challenge here is to really understand that things are probably going to be really passionate and fiery in the beginning, but you guys need to really work on connecting on a deeper level as time moves on. I'm really I'm I'm being called to mention to keep keep an eye on that honeymoon phase, guys. Okay, keep an eye on the on the honeymoon phase. The potential outcome for the second half of the month: the Queen of Wands. Ooh, fiery, passionate, loving, um, magnetic, attractive, social. Queen of Wands is coupled with the High Priestess. All right. So, um, intuition. This is strange, but there could be some sort of revealing of... Um, because often the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands often speak to twin flames here. Um, and so does the Empress. I see the Queen of Wands and the Empress as the Divine Feminine, all right? So uh, someone's twin flame status may be brought to light with the High Priestess. Um, the High Priestess is... Uh, keep secrets. She could be revealing a secret here. Um, but outside of Twin Flames, I feel, I, I, outside of, of Twin Flames shit, like whatever, that's really specific. But I, what I'm also getting here with the Queen of Wands and um, the High Priestess, someone still might be holding back a bit of their passion. Someone still might be holding back Quite a bit. Out of fear of moving too quickly, potentially. And I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. I just caution against holding back and being deceptive. Okay? But either way, there is a really passionate energy here. <laughs> yeah, you've got the Knight of Wands, you've got the Four of Wands, the Six of Wands, the Ace of Wands, the Eight of Wands, and now the Queen of Wands. Not only is this passionate, but it's very, it, it's very possible, entirely possible that this is a divinely orchestrated, divinely guided relationship, okay? A divinely guided partnership. Soulmate, twin flame, divine partnership, that kind of thing, okay? All right, cool. So let's get into your oracle. 
guidance from the unicorns. For Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. All right, let's see here. For Capricorn, whoops, there we go. <laughs> All right, you got quite a few of them here. Oh, you got three. Okay, anger, safely express your anger. Use anger as a positive force. Honor all of your emotions as sacred. For me, this is not so much anger, it's more aggression, okay? Just channel that into, um, to benefit you. Gentleness, be kind to yourself and others. Honor your gentleness, speak words of love. And finally, you have intuition. Listen to the whispers of your heart. Use divination tools to help you decide. Trust your intuition no matter what. And I'm hearing, again, I'm hearing divinely orchestrated, divinely guided, all right? So, and anger is, even though it says anger, this is, this, and there is a passion card. It's just, I feel like this is, this is probably for the person that's coming out of the relationship, uh, out of a previous relationship. Um, any sort of anger or animosity you may still be feeling, use that to channel you. You channel that as fuel to just move you forward in a better or different direction. Okay, but also it does say honor all of your emotions as sacred. So whatever you're feeling, especially for the person that's going to be really holding back because they may have come out of a relationship that and they uh, a relationship that didn't necessarily end well or whatever, it just ended and um, you don't necessarily want to move too quickly, don't, well, because I don't want to tell anyone to tell anybody what to do, but try not to hide from your emotions, try not to push them away, it's okay to feel them. Even if you just came out of a relationship with someone and even if it was a long-term relationship and you guys were, you know, really passionate, very happy with each other for some reason and, and just things just didn't work out. If you're feeling a new fire for someone else, that is okay. And this whole thing of, oh, well, you should wait a certain amount of time, that doesn't work for everybody and that's not always necessary, all right? Follow, uh, honor all of your emotions, okay? But yeah. Gentleness, just be kind and gentle with yourself and others. I'm also getting an energy of be patient with yourself and others. And then intuition. Again, if your heart or your intuition is leading you in the direction of a new person, go with it. Explore it. Take it easy if you want to. Take it slow if you want to. That's fine. But, you know, honor your intuition and honor your emotions. Yeah? All right, Capricorn. There it is. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that resonated with you. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out if you'd like a reading or whatnot. I am available for that. Yeah. Much love to you guys. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of November. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.